Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, going through my top 100 games of all time. And uh, this time we're going through 70 through 61. Uh, there's a couple of really good two-player games in this list. There's also a lot more that I don't own. Um, I think I own five of the, out of these 10. So less props, I apologize. Um, these are also fairly light games. I tend to enjoy heavier games more and light and heavy in this context, if you haven't heard it, relates to like complexity and depth, um, how hard it is to play the game. Um, but yeah, so uh, without further ado, 70 through 61. Number 70 is Dice Forge, which is one I don't own. It's probably the heaviest one in this 10 and also probably the most unique one in this 10. So I've been talking about deck building games, um, which if you don't know is when you're adding cards to your own personal deck um, that you're then playing the game with. Dice Forge is a dice building game in that you have two little dice, these big, well, I say little, these big chunky dice, they're like that size, and you change the faces on them. The mechanics of it are fascinating. Um, and so you start out with these fairly basic dice. At the beginning of each player's turn, you roll both of your dice and you get whatever bonuses it says on there. Those are the resources that you use. Um, and it's really fascinating that you can customize your dice and change your strategies up based on what you expect to roll. Still a lot of luck because you're rolling dice, but it's really fun to, uh, it's so unique. I, I think there's one other dice builder on the market that I haven't played. Um, dice Forge though, really good game, big fan. Number 69 is For Sale, which is uh, one of my go-to filler games, uh, which is a quick game that you play in between other games. Or also I use this as an introductory game for people who haven't played many games before. Um, in this game, you are, it's the, the game of property and prosperity. It's the, the real estate game, but better than Monopoly. Um, it's very fast. It's a bidding game where you're bidding these, this, uh, these little coins to get these house cards, which are very fun. They go all the way from cardboard box up to space station, as, as we know. Um, and then in the second half of the game, you sell the houses, you flip them, you turn them to make a profit. Whoever has the most money at the end wins. Um, whole game doesn't take more than 20 minutes. Um, it can take a lot less if people know what the, if everyone has already played before. Um, lots of fun. Highly recommend. Plays well with five and six, um, which is usually what I pulled out for. I wouldn't really play it with three or four. Uh, but five or six, great game. Number 68 is a game I don't own called Magic Maze. And this is a real-time game, meaning that there are no turns. And in fact, there's this little sand timer that's running out. And you're playing, the theme is very strange. You're playing fantasy characters who are running through a mall trying to grab various things, like the dwarf wants his axe, the elf wants his bow. It's, it's very odd theming. But essentially... It's, it's a cooperative game, it's real time, there's no pausing, though there are times when you can flip the timer over so that you don't lose. Um, and each player can, can usually move the pieces only in one certain way, maybe two. Um, and so you, you're on a little grid, you need to move them. So maybe someone needs to move the piece north, um, but there's four pieces and you might you can't talk to them. You can't tell them what to do. So you get very frustrated and you take this large pawn and you and you put it in front of them, meaning I need you to do something. And then they get very frustrated because they have no idea what you're talking about, but you can't actually speak to them. Um, and I, I think it's pretty hysterical and very fast paced. And at higher difficulties, very difficult to, um, it, but it gets into a fun rhythm as well. Works perfectly well with four. Um, I would also play it with three, but I wouldn't, and I have played it with two and it's not bad, um, but I would not play it with five. Uh, four is great because if you're playing with four, each player has one of the cardinal directions that they can move the pieces in and that's great. Um, of course, in the course of the game, you're switching those directions up. So before you maybe you're moving pieces north, now you have to move them east. And it's very difficult, fun game. Number 67 is a game called Inuit. Uh, this game was purchased by my wife at our favorite FLGS, friendly local game store, um, Games Unlimited in Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh. Um, she bought this game because she thought it was pretty, which it is, 
um, also plays really well, which is great. <laughs> um, the theme is also fun. It's uh, it's based on indigenous people of uh, North America, um, as in the Inuit. Um, and each of the adults in the game, so you're you're drafting cards in this game and building your tableau. It's a tableau, tableau building game. Each of the adults has like a unique name, which is actually a name that would be used in Inuit culture, um, which is pretty cool. And then you're doing things like hunting polar bears and seals and uh, performing rituals and things and scouting. Lots, lots of fun. Um, uh, yeah, it's very unique for a tableau builder and it plays pretty quickly. Um, big fan. Some of the stuff in the expansion it comes with two built-in expansions. I would pick and choose what you want to use from those. Um, but the base game is also just quite good. And that's number 67, Inuit. Number 66 is another game I don't own. It's a game called Parks. This is the second game on my top 100 and final, I think. It's based, the theme is the national parks. Um, and in this one, uh, you're moving along a little path, taking actions in order to collect resources, in order to visit parks. Um, and when you visit parks, you get points. Um, it's fairly simple. It's certainly an update, in my opinion, on the, the furthest path person takes the next turn, um, as in uh, Takedo, which I am not a huge fan of. Uh, I, I, I played it out. Um, but Parks is also very beautiful. Uh, the artwork on the cards for the Parks is fantastic. You got nice little wooden pieces too. Um, yeah, big fan. That's 66 Parks. Number 65 is one of my go-to uh, two-player games. This is Lost Cities. Um, I initially started playing this game with Nick Lischko when we were studying abroad in Austria and we were taking a game theory design, a game theory class um, with Dr. Welker. And there were a lot of games and it's like you play these games and, and you know talk about them and about the game theory elements in them. Um, and we played this a lot, uh, good times. Um, also played this a lot with my wife. Um, one of the games we took on honeymoon. Um, and this is also a game that I tend to give people, at least back when I was single and wanted to give people board games for, for gifts, I would give, the, give it to them as wedding gifts. So if I've ever given you Lost Cities for a wedding gift, um, post in the comments or something, I don't know. Um, really fun game. There's a newer version that includes six expeditions. Uh, this is the original one that includes five. I hear this one's better. Because with with five expeditions, the two of you are bound to be fighting over one. Because you almost always want like three expeditions. Sometimes if you're crazy, you'll do four. Sometimes if your game's not going so well, you'll do two. Um, and if you're really insane, you'll try five and you'll lose horribly. So that's good. Um, but very simple game. Just numbers that you're trying to put in sequence. Um, from Rainer Knizia, um, who is very prolific and who has been on this list before and will be on this list again. Number 64 is another two-player game, only two-player game, called Jaipur. Uh, this was given to us by a friend of Amy's that she knows through her work that heard that we like, I can't remember his name, I always forget his name, great guy, um, but he knew that we like board games and had heard that we hadn't played Jaipur, so he gave this to us. It's his favorite game, I guess, to play with his wife. Um, and this is a two-player trading game, as in you're trading goods back and forth, and that doesn't normally work with two players. It actually does work here. Um, at first glance, I was not too enamored with it, but on subsequent plays, this there's a surprising amount of depth in here, and it plays quickly, but the more you play it, the more you see kind of what it has to offer. Um, in your essentially trying to trade goods and get the most points. The earlier you trade them, the earlier you sell them, the more points you get. But if you sell three, four, or five, you get bonuses. And there's also a lot of camels involved, and who doesn't love camels? Um, other than people who have to work with them in person. Um, that's 64, Jaipur. Number 63 is Bananagrams. If you haven't played Bananagrams, this is speed scrabble that's literally all it is so you got little chunky scrabble pieces here they don't have points on them unlike in scrabble but basically whoever 
finishes their layout first wins. Works well with like two to seven people or so. Seven might be a bit much, two to six. Um, very fast. Also, I believe the first game I ever played with my wife, then friend, um, and I think we played this at a bar celebrating her 21st birthday at Cladon in the south side. Um, pour one out for Cladon, rest in peace. Um, great game, really fun, insane, and people who are not good at words game, word games will not be good at this. That's kind of the downfall of word games. But this is one of the word games that I really enjoy. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the highest word game on my list. Uh, Scrabble will not be on my list. It's okay for a two-player game. Three or four is never played horribly. But, but Bananagrams is great. That's number 63, Bananagrams. Uh, number 62 is a game I don't have. It's called Mysterium. Uh, we got this game out of the library. We're lucky enough to live near a library that rents out or rent, you know, lends out uh, very good board games. Mysterium is a take on Deekseat, which is a very good game that I may or may not be talking about later. Um, but in Mysterium, one player cannot communicate with the other players, but everyone's on a team. Um, so they can't say words to the other players, but they have to communicate with them via these very strange cards. And they're trying to get, guess them various characters. It's kind of like a whodunit sort of thing, but the, the theme's a little weird and like you're a ghost trying to tell who you, how you were killed and who killed you and stuff like that. So it's like, well, Clue, but more spooky. But in reality... What you're doing is you're sending these weird cards to people and trying to get them to pick like, oh, I bet it was that guy with that weapon in that room. Um, lots of fun. You may notice this and Magic Maze and other ones on my list. I am a fan of cooperative games if you cannot communicate well, if, you, if your communication is hampered in some way. Um, and my favorite cooperative game that we'll get to later um, has that in spades. Uh, but number 62 is Mysterium. Uh, really like it. It's fascinating and a nice little twist on kind of the, de the deep seat model, if you will. Number 61, last one on this list, another game I don't own, is Kingdom Builder. Um, Kingdom Builder is a game where you draw a card and then you have to put your three little guys, three little houses on the map, and you're trying to fulfill different objectives. It's very modular, meaning that the board changes each game. There's different ways you can set up the board. Um, the special scoring rules change each game. The special powers change each game. Maybe you get a farm. Maybe you get an oasis. You can do different things on your turn. Um, it's There's a lot of luck in the game, but a lot of ways to mitigate the luck. Um, it's available on Board Game Arena. Uh, not sponsoring my videos yet. Um, and uh, I thought I was very good at the game until I, until I started playing on Board Game Arena and found out that I'm not. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's it's an interesting little take on like putting guys on a map in order to score points. Um, highly recommended. That's number 61, Kingdom Builder. And that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed. And uh, I'll be back with, uh, I guess, so now we're in the top, you know, top two thirds. That's something, mathematically. And we'll be back with, uh, what is it, uh, 60 to 51. Um, might take me a little bit of time because there's holidays and stuff. But I am trying to get these done before the end of the year, ideally. See ya.